I think the right way to phrase the question is um, you don't always look for an evolutionary advantage in the thing you're looking at. Uh, it could be that the thing you're looking at is a byproduct of something else which does have an evolutionary advantage, even if the thing you're looking at doesn't. Um, my favorite example of this is uh, insects which appear to approach a candle at night and, uh, and fry themselves. And you could ask yourself, what is the evolutionary advantage of self-immolation behavior in, in, in moths? And clearly, there, 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 there isn't one. What there is, is an evolutionary advantage to a sensory neural mechanism, which unfortunately has the consequence of making them approach candles. Because there weren't any candles in the, in, in the ancestral environment in which they were naturally selected. Uh, if there had been, if candles had been a major feature of the environment of moths for uh, many thousands of years, then they no longer would fry themselves in candles. It's because candles are rare in their world, whereas the moon is common. I'm just guessing. There's a good deal of evidence that insects use celestial objects as a, as a compass. And uh, th so night flying moths would very probably use the moon as a compass. Not that they fly towards the moon, but that they keep the moon at a fixed angle. The moon's up there, and the moth manages to fly in a straight line by keeping the moon at 30 degrees, say. Well, if you do that and it's the moon, because the rays are coming from optical infinity, it works very well. If you do it to a candle, you perform a neat logarithmic spiral into the candle and fry yourself. So the, the right way to ask the question is not what's the evolutionary advantage of, of flying into candle flames. It's what's the evolutionary advantage of maintaining a fixed angle to bright objects at night. Maybe there's something similar about religion. The right question is not what's the evolutionary advantage of religion, but what's the evolutionary advantage of possessing certain psychological predispositions which have as an inadvertent and possibly unfortunate consequence religion. Um, and the kind of thing I'm thinking of is a tendency to obey authority. Uh, a, a tendency to obey authority, especially in a child, is a very, very valuable uh, psychological property. If a child doesn't believe what its parents tell it, when the child is told, don't jump in the fire, or don't jump off a cliff, um, a child that practiced an experimental test of that instruction would not leave many genes behind. Any genetic tendency that builds child brains with a rule of thumb that says, believe whatever your parents tell you, don't ask questions, just do it, that would have survival value. Well, such a brain mechanism works very well for good advice, like don't jump off a cliff. But it is vulnerable to parasitization in the same kind of way as computers are vulnerable to computer viruses. Um, a, a computer is a versatile machine which obeys implicitly whatever instructions you program into it. And most people, most computer programmers, program good things into computers, like word processors and spreadsheets and things. But you can program a virus into a computer which is just a, a program that says, copy me and pass me on to another computer over the internet, say. It may incidentally say, and while you're about it, destroy this person's defill thesis. <laughs> v such viruses have been written, and they, and they do spread. A computer is automatically vulnerable to viruses, precisely because it is a machine that obeys whatever instructions are given it in the correct language. A child brain is a machine which obeys whatever instructions it's given by its parents for the very good reason that I've already told you. 
Therefore, the child brain is also vulnerable to parasitization by viral code, which is things like it is essential that you pray five times a day. It is essential that you sacrifice a goat at the time of the full moon. Uh, how is the child brain to know which bits of advice are good, like don't jump over the cliff, and which bits are silly, like sacrifice a goat? If the child brain could tell which was good advice and which was bad advice, it wouldn't need the advice in the first place. That's the whole point. It needs the advice, and therefore it is automatically vulnerable to the equivalent of computer viruses, which is what I think religions are.